Well, good morning to you all. And a warm welcome to our service at Holy Communion this morning. Lovely to see you all. I hope you'll forgive me if I, I just kind of say a few words at the beginning of the service, just to kind of <coughs> reflect on the events that happened yesterday in terms of the government announcement um, and its impact on us. It, it seems to be a very fluid situation at the moment. Um, I looked last night and again this morning at the government website and also at the Church of England uh, website for guidance. Um, the government website appeared clear. Um, although, or what it did say was that with the exception of funerals, uh, acts of worship in church are not to take place until after Wednesday the 2nd of December. So that was my working assumption coming into church this morning. Somebody else has indicated that they heard something on the radio which seems to contradict that. <laughs> and at the moment there's no guidance on the Church of England website. So it's, it's hard to be definitive about what to say. My assumption is that there won't be services in church over the next three Sundays. But um, we will communicate as best we can through our normal outlet. And I would invite anybody who was hoping to come next Sunday, who got a book place next Sunday, to give them a ring during the week, because we may be able to be absolutely clear about whether the Remembrance Sunday service is going ahead or not. My assumption is that it won't be, uh, and exactly what form of service, if any, or event, if any, that can take place next Sunday is yet to be resolved. What we can do, according to the government website, is open the church for private prayer. And having had a quick word with Lynn and Robert this morning, what we've agreed is that unless there is guidance to the contrary, the church will be open on Sunday morning from 10 to 12. Anybody who wants to come and just have a time of private prayer. But what we do ask is if you could ring Lynn uh, to say you're, you're wanting to come on that for that, just in case we've had further guidance that contradicts that. Um, we can also um, re use the church building to record something to go online. We don't yet know what we're going to do or when for that, so uh, we will obviously communicate through what outlets we can uh, as to whether we're offering an online service and when. So I'm sorry that's a bit vague, um, but that's trying to respond to the latest guidance that we have. I'm very happy to have conversations after church. Uh, as I say, do communicate with you if you had a booked place uh, for next Sunday, um, and we will try and communicate as best we can. We are hoping that, um, I don't know, it's going to be connecting and kind of to assemble it so we can't use that as our as our meeting before you go in with the floor for us. So all we'll do is communicate as best we can. But as I say, if you have a booked place, remember it's something service, do have a chat with them during the week just to confirm whether it's on or not. Can I just say perhaps even before we start the service, are there any immediate comments or questions anybody wants to make in case I can respond. Liz? Just to say that next Sunday is fully booked, so if you haven't booked, please don't try and phone me to book. Um, there are no spaces, so it's really those people that are booked that need to check if we're going in or not. Thank you. Thanks. <coughs> Thank you very much. So, let's just have a a moment of quiet after that, uh, just to draw our thoughts back to the fact that we're here to, to worship God. Uh, so we'll have a moment of quiet, and then I'll invite you to join in our opening prayer, in which we ask God's blessing uh, and help for us. We say together, Almighty God, 
to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We thank Maggie for um, playing the organ for us today, we have our choir today. So we'll have our opening here, which will be on the screen. Uh, we sit uh, and uh, let the choir lead us in the King of Love, my shepherd.
will say together, Most merciful God, Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, we confess that we have sinned in thought, word and deed. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbour as ourselves. In your mercy, forgive what we have been. Help us to amend what we are and direct what we shall be, that we may do justly, love mercy, and walk humbly with you, our God. Amen. May the God of love and power forgive us and free us from our sins. May he heal and strengthen us by his Spirit, and may he raise us to new life in Christ our Lord. Amen. Today is All Saints Day, and this is the special reading for this day. O Almighty God, who has knit together your elect in one communion and fellowship in the mystical body of your Son, Christ our Lord, grant us grace so to follow your blessed saints in all virtuous and godly living that we may come to those inexpressible joys which, thou, which you have prepared for those who truly love you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And we remain seated for our first week. The reading is from John, chapter 3, 1 to 3. Now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a member of the Jewish ruling council. He came to Jesus at night and said, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. This is the word of God. Remain seated for our next hymn, Blessed are the Pure in Heart. <coughs>
The first reading is from the first letter of John, and just a few verses from there. How great is the love the Father has lavished on us, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know him. Dear friends, now we are children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. Everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. Now if you are able to please stand for our Gospel reading, which comes from Luke's Gospel, chapter 5. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. I actually got the wrong one. <laughs> Sorry about that. and sat down. His disciples came to him, and he began to teach them, saying, Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they will be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they will inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Blessed are the merciful, for they will be shown mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of God. Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you. Amen. As we stand, shall we pray? Father, as we reflect on our readings this morning, we do pray that you will open our hearts and minds to your Holy Spirit. Help us to be receptive to you. And help us in our response, Lord. We ask this in Jesus' name. Thank you.